My name is Greg Schwarz. I'm one of the uh, data editors here with the uh, AS Journals. And uh, that was a good introduction there from Chris to tell us that we're expecting a flood of software papers here because I'm going to talk to you about uh, the latest version of AES Tech, which we're going to release later this afternoon, version 6. It's the first one that's come out in 11 years, so it's about time. I'm very excited here to stand up and talk to you about uh, all the latest things. Unfortunately, I only have 15 minutes to do so. I'll try to leave some time uh, for uh, some questions about it, but uh, really there's a lot of stuff that we're doing here, so I would suggest if uh, you want to talk about some of these technical details, just track me down later in the, in the meeting. So let me just jump right in and start talking about them. Uh, I'm actually going to skip these first ones because I really just want to get in and start talking about them. But this is just the gist of all of the features that we're, that we're doing. So we got two pages of features here. Uh, the first one, hopefully you can see this, is that we have basically adopted uh, Emulate AppJ as the underlying base code for AS Tech now. Uh, an informal and sort of random review of our manuscripts shows that on order already two-thirds of these articles use Emulate AppJ either are submitted in that format or you can see that they were at some point in the process they used it because it was commented out. So we feel that most of the people are already very familiar and have kind of voted with their feet so to speak in using this package. So we've kind of taken it uh, from Alexei and uh, are now building on it ourselves. So in essence you still have the same style. We're really pushing for these more tighter uh, typeset manuscripts like you get with Amulet AppJ. You, the single column is the default, but you can also go off to the double column. Uh, let me also point out as I'm talking here, anything in yellow, I'll try to sort of demonstrate how this looks in the LaTeX itself. Uh, pretty straightforward if you've used this before. Uh, we've done a lot of interesting, exciting stuff on the front end. One thing we've introduced is the ability to do a watermark on the very first page through this very simple watermark uh, command. Uh, hopefully you can see this uh, in light gray over here on the, on the cover. Very easy to do. Uh, another one that's pretty exciting is, I think Butler was talking about some of these giant papers with 300, 400, 500 uh, authors. If you're the poor referee that has to look at that, the first five or six pages when you go to print it out is just author and affiliation. So we've introduced a couple new commands that will allow you to sort of truncate this list. And I'm using one of my own articles that I uh, published earlier last year, actually, to sort of demonstrate this. Unfortunately, you can't really see it. But the idea is there's these, three, these two new commands where you can basically say truncate the author list at a certain point. In this case, it's the first author call uh, will only show up. And then I'm going to define everybody else under this collaboration name. And uh, that's all that will show uh, on the first page. And then if you use this all authors command at the very end, it will still spit out the full author list. So the idea of this is that when you want to go post on Astro PH, you can put in this information, and then when someone downloads the PDF and they want to print it out and take it on an airplane or something like that, they don't have to print the last eight pages. They can actually get all this information. They go straight into the article without having to wade through all of this affiliation information. But it still retains you know, all the authors as well. Another thing that's very interesting that was just introduced is new ways to mark up revisions. Uh, I know it can be kind of frustrating as a referee. We're asking you to give up some of your valuable time to do this. So it's in our best interest as a society to make it easier for you. So what we'd like to do is encourage authors to use some of this new markup to identify exactly the things that they've changed. So these new things that we've done are uh, slash added, deleted, replaced, and explained, where you can actually add this information in so it's very simple to see when you tag up this information. The beauty of this, though, is that in your document class at the top here, you have total control over to whether you want this to show up or not. Uh, these two options, track changes and line numbers, well, line numbers is pretty obvious. It just puts line, it numbers all the lines in your uh, thing to make it easy to see where you are. But this track changes, if you include it, all this, uh, new markup gets highlighted in red for most of it, or I think it's, it's purple, I believe. Yeah, purple for explaining text. And then if you don't want it to show up, you just take this out of the option and boom, it's gone. So it makes it very simple when you finally get to the accepted stage to turn it off and then submit it right up to, say, Astro PH. There's no need to go back through your text and start you know, removing all this information. Uh, let's move on to figures here real quickly. There's two big things for figures. One is we've always been doing something we called figure sets. What this is is it's a collection of figures, of similar style figures, that you can think of as kind of approaching in a stack, right? And what you do is in a 
sort of the PDF copy, you only show one, but in the electronic version, the HTML, you have access to every single one in this stack. And this is a live example, well not a live, an example from uh, the electronic edition where you can see at the top part here, you have a scroll bar that allows you to go to any one that you want in the sequence. You click on it and it shows up down below. So it's very simple to find what you need. You can also download everything in a tarball if you want. So this is this great functionality we have right now. We've had it for like five or six years in the electronic edition, but the question is how do you make this work in, in LaTeX? Before you basically had to kind of kludge this in, but now this figure set markup is in ASTEC 6. You can all do it yourself. Uh, this just kind of gives you a flavor of how it's done. At the bottom is a URL, and I'll post it again at the end of the, this talk here, that uh, is a tool that will help you generate this kind of stuff for yourself. Um, Another thing is what I've been calling grid figures. These are a series of, it's a single plot, but it consists of many .eps files or many .pdf files arranged in some sort of grid, three by four, two by seven, whatever. And in the past, I've seen many authors do a variety of different ways to set these things up. And what we try to do is come up with a new way to make this simple so that you can do it. And basically the way it works is you have this new command grid line, grid line which defines each any column that you want, and then within that, or I'm sorry, with a row, and within that row, you have these other ones, fig left, fig right, that sort of justifies it, and you can set up this very simply. So in this example here, I've created an uh, inverted uh, pyramid style of these seven figures, and this is just the, the LaTeX for it. It's pretty simple. The first grid line defines these first three figures, the next one does the two, and then finally one. So you have a lot of flexibility with doing whatever you want. If you really wanted to go nuts and do a uh, 100 by 100 figure, it would be completely uh, illegible, but you could do it with this, this new markup. All right, here's something that uh, almost killed our LaTeX pro programmers. All these new table features that I hope uh, everybody's as excited about as I am. Uh, we have basically five new things. One is automatic column numbering. So if you Normally what you want to do in the header part of any table is you've got the, you know, the information at the bottom, you might number it in parentheses, one, two, three, four, all these columns. Now with this new call numbers command, it will automatically do that numbering for you, uh, which is kind of nice. Another feature here is that, as you know, if you've worked in LaTeX, um, when you work in tables, it's already in math mode, which means you've got to put dollar signs around everything to make it work. Now, uh, instead of using the normal C, L, and R um, alignment tokens at the top, you make those capitals and that will make those columns automatically in math mode. So to demonstrate this is this simple LaTeX table over here where the middle column is the old way where I've used a regular small lowercase l. And you can see uh, on the right that I had to put the dollar signs around alpha and the dollar signs around the plus or minus to make it work. On the right side is the new way where I use the capital L I don't have to do that anymore because it's already in math mode and or it, it takes it out of that and I can just go. So that should, in theory, save you a lot of effort if you have long tables. Uh, here's a new one, which is the hiding columns. This was a suggestion from one of our authors, actually. You can imagine what the use would this be is, is that you're com when you're first writing your article, as Ethan was talking about, you don't... You still have all these ideas of what you want to do, so you start throwing everything, you know, the whole kitchen sink into your table. And as it's, you iterate with your authors on these tables, you might just say, well, I don't really need this, this table. And if you had a really long one, that could be a big pain in the butt to kind of extract it. Now with this new H token, you just put that in and when you print it out, that table, that column will no longer appear. So here's an example. There's the LaTeX on the right, of course. As you can see, there's four columns, A, B, C, D. And just by putting the H in the second column, the output is that B column completely goes away. This is also be useful for things like uh, if you've got a column that's too wide to fit, but you know there's critical information that needs to stay in there, like say there's some really unwieldy IAU official name, you can hide it in the, the LaTeX, but we'll still extract it out and it'll get to CDS and places like that that really need it. But you can still have a very compact table for, uh, for print. Uh, a new one here is decimal alignment. Before, all you really had without doing some crazy stuff was left, right, and center. But now with this new D token, you can do a decimal alignment. And here's some, you know, an example here on the left. It's pretty simple to do. There are some uh, little peculiarities that you have to be aware of. I'm not going to go into it now, but if you read the documentation, you can see what I'm talking about. But hopefully this will be a, a big help for people. 
Uh, and then lastly, we have something called the split deluxe table and split table. Basically what that does is if you have a, a very wide table that refuses to fit on a print page and you need to get it in there, it won't rotate, you can't shrink it down, use this new format and it will actually sort of chunkify it either into two parts or three parts. And uh, in this example here, I've taken a long table that's uh, 14 columns long and chunked it into two bits so that it fits in uh, a portrait mode. And this is very simple to do. We just introduced this new B token and that just tells it exactly where to split. So here's the actual LaTeX. If you see at the top line, you just drop that in there and it will split exactly where you want it. The beauty of all these uh, new table features is they work uh, all with each other. So you can imagine I could split this table I could easily come in and change one of these C commands to an H and hide that thing. I could put in the column numbers and it would automatically number all of these things for me, which you can see the advantage of that when you have an extremely long table and it will carry it through uh, when you split it. So there's a lot of uh, functionality that we've introduced here in the tables. Uh, in addition to touch on what uh, Chris Lintot was just talking about with the new software policy in conjunction with this, we're releasing a new uh, BST file for those of you that use BibTeX that will uh, help you do these software citations um, to get the citation uh, format actually correct here. So this will be part of the package that you can download as well. Um, again, because we're going to a consolidated set of journals here, it doesn't make sense to call the old one was appj.bst, so now it's called the asjournal.bst to reflect the fact that we're you know, one big fa happily family here. Uh, likewise, we've had this facility keyword uh, where we introduced it so you could sort of cite, so you could kind of highlight all the facilities that you've used and with that had a controlled vocabulary that you could add after your uh, acknowledgments to help people see what uh, instruments you've used. Likewise, we've introduced this software one so you can uh, also bring acknowledgments to the software. Um, it goes in the exact same place, it'll support putting URLs in, so if you've actually got DOI um, uh, citations there, you can add it in this place as well as using the other method. Um, let's see how, where I'm doing on time. Uh, I think I'm okay, but this is just some more information if you want to jot it down. The, everything is now ready to be downloaded off this main page here. All the documentation has been given a fresh coat of paint and updated. There's new sample files for you to look at that uh, document these new features. Um, there's a page, the second link here is for the revision so you can see exactly what is new and how things have changed from AS Tech 5.2. Uh, there's a new journal guide that explains all this. Um, hopefully, you, so if you run into exactly why isn't this not working, uh, go to there and you can see what it is. Uh, our new software policy is listed there too and then there's a couple tools that have existed for a long time that will actually also help you make deluxe tables and these figure sets. Um, that's actually the end of what I have to say. I'm just gonna leave this up here in case you wanna jot it down. I'm more than happy to take any questions in my last two and a half minutes, if you've got any. Yes, George. Is this information linked off the instructions to authors page? Uh, yes, we have a new set of author instructions page and it, everything flows right off that. So we will be removing the old author instructions in favor of the new ones uh, shortly. So that you, when you start Googling it, you'll, you'll find it there. <laughs>